You have been the chief engineer of SpaceX and remain the chief engineer of SpaceX. It is the first private company to ever make it to orbit. Walk us through the beginnings of that. It is not, um, it's something that nobody else has been able to accomplish. Well, that's, it's quite a long story. Uh, and there are some books that have been written about it. Uh, but uh, in the beginning, I, we didn't actually know anything about rockets. Uh, so our first three missions failed, actually, of our Falcon 1 rocket. And uh, I, we almost ran out of money and just barely made it with the fourth launch. If the fourth launch of Falcon 1 had not succeeded, we would have failed as a company. So we just barely made it. Um, so I have to say that uh, I was not a very good chief engineer in the beginning, but uh, I did learn over time. Um, and uh, I think we've gotten at this point to where the, the vehicle is very reliable and we are going to uh, be able to take astronauts uh, to Mars. In fact, we want to take uh, anyone who goes to Mars and ultimately build a self-sustaining civilization on Mars. That is the long-term goal of the company. Make life How multi-planetary. Think, I mean, that is a, a very bold vision. How long do you think that might take SpaceX to, to be able to accomplish? I think we could do it in 20 to 30 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so but really, the, but the, in our but lifetime, I should say, if, if God blesses me with a longer life than I deserve, right? <laughs> yeah. um, I could always hope. Uh, I'd lo- I would love to be able to see that. That would be amazing. Um, I, I happen to have a telescope, and I love to look at the stars in the sky and, and the planets, and um, I am amazed at the majesty of all of creation and the idea that we even look at the moon and we can go there and come back or a space station or you launching the hundreds of satellites you have. I want to I want to ask you uh, this question, if I may. And it's, you know, every aspect of this rescue had challenges and danger. Um, The launch, we start there. Um, Then the rocket landing, I mean, we showed, I I couldn't believe you were able to land the the rocket that fell off perfectly where where you wanted it to land. The docking video when they actually Mm -hmm. connected and got onto the space station. Then the the taking off earlier today was a 17-hour trip leading to the splashdown that all of America watched today. Every single aspect of that has danger and complications. Walk us through yes, the dangers of each so. phase. Well, on, on the ascent phase, you, there's always some chance that either the first or second stage will blow up. Uh, in fact, it's, I find it's actually remarkable when it, you see a rocket. I mean, when, when, when I see the rocket, I, I see a list of all the things that are wrong, all of the ways that it could, could go wrong and potentially fail. So you could have a first stage failure, a second stage failure, a stage separation failure. Uh, the, the dragon could fail to separate from the rocket. The trunk could fail to separate from dragon. Uh, there could be uh, a, an, a sort of an engine failure on the spacecraft itself. When, when it's coming back, it's coming in so fast, it's a blazing meteor. Um, and if anything happens to the heat shield, uh, the, uh, the whole craft is going to disintegrate. So uh, it's, it's remarkable that humans can actually go all the way to orbit and, and come back from orbit uh, given the immense amounts of, uh, of energy that is required to get to orbit and, and the amount of energy that must be dissipated upon return. Um, and then the, sh- the, the, the parachutes have to open. That all has to work. Uh, now, long term, we, we are going to be doing, not long term, this year, in fact, we are launching the, the Starship rocket, which I recommend uh, maybe doing a piece on, because that is truly a, a revolutionary rocket. It is the Starship is the first rocket that has the potential to make life multiplanetary, to make us a multi-planet civilization for the first time uh, in, the, in the history of Earth. And that's uh, wow. truly profound. Well, what was amazing, and I studied a lot of this because of I, my need to cover it, um, at one point going 17,000 miles per hour, uh, going through 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, you have this thermal protection system. Now, we do know that the Boeing Starliner, you know, we, we know that it had problems. So these problems that you talk about, we, we can't take them for granted or get complacent. Explain how, how, you, know, how you get up to 17,000 miles per hour. How do you withstand 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit and the thermal protection system that protects that capsule and then the launch obviously of the parachutes which were critical to slow it down for its splashdown. 
Uh, yeah, that, that, uh, and perhaps we should do a longer segment because uh, I'd be happy to explain it in detail. Um, I'll do the, I don't know, the two-minute version here. Yeah, um, okay. The, 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 the Falcon 9 rocket takes off with uh, 1.7 million pounds of thrust. So you can imagine something that, that has enough thrust to lift an office building off its foundations. Um, and th that, uh, it, and it gets to orbit, it gets to roughly 17,000 miles an hour in nine minutes. So from zero to 17,000 miles an hour in, in nine minutes. And then uh, it's just, w when it comes back, you've got that heat shield that's got to dissipate that energy. Uh, you, like I said, you're coming in like a blazing meteor and uh, hardly anything can survive that heat. And if the heat shield fails, you just get vaporized immediately. So it's, uh, we're, we're really testing the very edge of human ability here, the very edge of material science. And uh, it's, it's kind of amazing that humans can do this at all. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. hopefully this gives, hopefully for, pe for people out there, this is uh, a moment of optimism about the future, a moment of excitement about the future, and it portends great things for America and humanity in space. Because oh. the flag still stands for freedom, and they can't take that.